Good morning, everybody. We are now one day away, one day and eight hours away from the start of the 2024 NFL Draft, the actual draft, not the imaginary draft, not the pretend draft, not the mock draft, not the simulated draft, the actual 2024 NFL Draft. And I'm excited. I think a lot of you guys are excited. I know it's not like last year, but it's it's still a good year. Every year in which you are alive to digest the NFL draft is a good one. As long as you have a team, as long as you have some skin in the game in the form of a rooting interest, it's always interesting. There's always the belief that you could get it right. Doesn't matter how many times before you've gotten it wrong. Doesn't matter how bad it went last time. Doesn't matter how random it is. Doesn't matter how luck-based it can be. There is a belief that maybe this is your time. So, I said I wanted to do 10 of these mock drafts over the course of last season and this offseason. So, even though I did one of these like a day and a half ago, I'm going to go ahead and do my final one now. Because by tomorrow, this stuff is not going to be very interesting. Because tomorrow is going to be all about what is actually happening, not what could happen. And once the draft starts... These mock drafts are basically meaningless, right? Because they're speculating about what could happen. Well, what's interesting about that when you can just watch what actually happened? So, going to go ahead and push this out now. I know I just did one a couple days ago, but let's just go ahead and go crazy with it. I mean, it's the right time of the year for it, isn't it? So, we're going to do mock draft 10.0. Real quick, one thing I want to say is that tonight I am planning on going live here on YouTube and also Facebook and also X with the Mock Draft Simulator Party, which is something I've done a few years in a row now where basically I go around to the various corners of the internet, pull up the various Mock Draft Simulators that various websites like PFF, um, I believe, um, who else does one, uh, the uh, NFL aggregate the um, big board aggregate website has one uh, I think there's one on the draft network all these different mock draft simulators I just go check them out and I run through simulations it usually takes a couple hours to get through all of it and we just see what we can come up with and I wanted to do it a little bit earlier than the night before but uh, with the way things broke we're going to be doing it tonight so it should be sometime after dinner 7 7 30 we should be going live, and then we'll just go for a couple hours until we're done with our mock draft party. So, tune in. Okay. 2024 Seahawks mock draft 10.0 from Seahawks Brendan Nelson. And one thing that I've really tried to do with these mock drafts is I want to come at each one from a slightly different angle while still producing something that could actually happen, that actually seems realistic, that actually seems possible. So I don't want to hammer the same points over and over again, but I want to address the same basic structure in a different way because the fundamentals of our roster only change so much with each mock draft I do. So there's only so much you can do, but I want to try to bring a little bit different energy with each mock we do. So for this one, it's just going to be kind of the ultimate dream for me. This is the way I hope the draft goes without getting completely unrealistic about it. So my first pick is going to be Brock Bowers. This is the dream to me. Brock Bowers to me is clearly a top five player in this draft and circumstances and scouts just having a little too much time on their hands pre-draft, I don't know, has conspired to where it's now conceivable he falls to 16. So that is my number one dream here. Uh, some people are going to say, wouldn't your number one dream be Caleb Williams? Sure, but Caleb's not going to fall to 16 in any circumstance. That's literally impossible. Drake May is not falling to 16. Jaden Daniels is not falling to 16. Those things cannot happen. What can happen is that so many teams get hyper-focused in on taking a quarterback, taking a wide receiver, taking offensive line, that Brock Bowers ends up slipping all the way to 16. That is at least conceivable, however unlikely it may be. And while I do suspect that he won't, if he is there, and I do think there is at least a 10% chance of it, I am all over it. He is as clean of a tight end prospect as I have ever seen in my life. 
I think you would be hard-pressed to come up with a better tight end prospect in the history of the league. He can he basically has it all except for overwhelming size. He does not have the Gronkowski type size. He does not have that physical profile that puts the fear of God into secondaries. But what he does have is the ability to block at a high level. He does have the ability to run good routes. He does have yak. He has good hands. He has all the things you could want from a modern tight end. He has the athleticism. He has the breaking tackles. He can do it all. And I know people are going to say, we already have a tight end. We gave all that money to Noah Fant. We gave that money to Pharaoh Brown. We can get a tight end here. We can get a tight end there. You know what? For this draft, I don't care. I want the best players. I don't care what position they play that much. And Brock Bowers is one of the best players in this draft, full stop. So, with me not trading my first round pick for a lower first round pick, that means we don't pick in the second, and we're picking in the third, and I'm taking Dominic Pooney, left guard from Kansas. And I know I picked him in my most recent mock before this one, my 9.0, so... Obviously, this is me kind of hammering on the same point as before, but I don't think I can make a reasonable mock that doesn't have the Seahawks addressing left guard at some point in the first hundred picks. If they get through the first three days of this, or excuse me, the first two days of this draft without a left guard, then it's going to be somewhat hard to defend that because we literally don't have one right now except for Lake and Tomlinson, who to me is, while maybe still a decent player, old and also a scheme, a complete scheme mismatch. So I can't get away from that. I cannot get away from taking a left guard at some point in the top 100. And Dominic Pooney is, I think, somebody who is good enough to start day one and be better than a guy like Lakin Tomlinson and be better than just a replacement level player and provide a pretty good scheme fit, even though he's not the most athletic guy in the world. He has movement skills. So I think that if you can come away with him, you're feeling pretty good about the stability of your present roster. Okay, so then we go down into round number four and we're picking Cedric Gray, another guy who I have um, picked in at least one, probably more, of my previous mock drafts. Um, he's just the best linebacker available at this point. <clears throat> if he's even here, he may go in the third, the late third. But I do think that it is conceivable. And you do see it on some big boards. You do see it on some uh, mock draft simulators, him falling to round four. So Cedric Gray, I, I think that you are kind of obligated to address linebacker pretty heavily in this draft at some point. Um, you've got very little depth at that position. You've got two starters on one-year deals. I don't think there's any getting away from that. My round four pick is going to be Dadrian Taylor Demerson, a safety out of Texas Tech. Another position that we need to address. And Taylor Demerson is one of these really fun safety sleepers. Hawks Nest likes him even more than I do, but I like him more than enough to take him in the fourth round. Really fun athlete, really good instincts. Uh, go watch my safety videos if you want to know more about DTD. But um, he would bring some very appealing um, traits to the table as a safety for the Seahawks and would help address our um, depth issues at that position right now where um, other than um, Wallace, we don't really have depth. Okay, so... Then we jump down to the sixth round. I'm taking Jordan McGee, linebacker from Temple. Another fun defensive sleeper. Another linebacker, but I, I do think there's a good chance we're going to take more than one in this draft. And Jordan McGee, I think, has some real coverage potential here. I think there's some really exciting tape with him. I think that he kind of stands out in this class as one of the late-round linebackers who could really make a impressively positive impact on... Um, on a defense at some point, maybe not immediately, but uh, he's a surprisingly good athlete. He put up really good numbers at Temple, and you the main obstacle to liking Jordan McGee is just accepting the fact that he played at a smaller school and um, wasn't going up against the best competition. Once you get past that, he brings a lot of good things to the table, and I would love to have him. I think he would basically allow us to feel really good about our linebacker room now and down the line. 
And then with my other sixth round pick, I'm going back to that old familiar well of Joe Milton, quarterback from Tennessee. And he's interesting for a couple different reasons. One, the quarterback talent. Unlikely that he ever realizes it, admittedly. I get it. However, there is immense talent there. He's got a cannon arm. His ability to fire the ball 65, 70 yards down the field is unmatched. He's got tremendous agility and mobility. He's... He's got all the tools. He just hasn't put it together yet in a productive way as it pertains to actually playing the position. But if he doesn't figure it out, guess what? There's a legitimate chance he can move to tight end. So in a way, I'm taking a guy who could, down the line, be a tight end for you. Farrell Brown's on a one-year deal, no offense on a, um, uh, no offense on a two-year deal, and Farrell Brown's on a one-year deal. So... The long term of the tight end position is not necessarily sewn up even with the drafting of Brock Bowers, who I think will very quickly become an elite tight end in this league. However, that doesn't change the fact that a guy like Joe Milton could get involved in that capacity as well. And with my seventh round pick, I'm taking Ryan Watts, one of my favorite cornerback sleepers in this draft. Big guy, long arms, just doesn't really have the ball skills and instincts you're looking for yet. Didn't produce a ton at Texas. The right coaching might be able to bring out something special here. This is a Pete Carroll special. We don't have Pete Carroll anymore, but Mike McDonald might look at this guy and go, I see some of the same things I think Pete would have seen. And I'm going to try to figure this out. So yeah, Ryan Watts, seventh round pick. And this kind of really takes care of a lot of my favorite guys. Bowers has been my favorite guy for a long time. We've addressed linebacker with two different picks, including one of my sleepers. We took a sleeper safety. We took my dream quarterback and we even took the cornerback that i started to really get into the more i looked into him all right see you guys later go hawks that is our final mock draft video of the year